I reached out and gently brushed a piece of hair away from her face, careful not to touch her skin. Her head tilted toward my hand like she knew I was there, and longed to be nearer. The hint of a smile played at the corner of her mouth. Mm, she sighed, her warm breath washing over my face, which was now just inches away. I felt the familiar burn intensify, but miraculously, it was overshadowed by the electric current that once again seemed to pass between Bella and I desperate for the distraction. I allowed one finger to lightly trace down her cheekbone, thrilling to the feeling of her warm skin against mine. Afraid she would stir at my cold touch. I held my breath and listened closely to her heartbeat, trying to find any indication that she'd been startled. As steady as her breathing, her heart continued its perfect rhythm, and I let out a sigh of relief. When she further relaxed into my touch, I started to hum softly, hoping whatever dreams were filling her mind remained pleasant ones. The night passed quickly and far too soon I could see the sun begin to streak in through the window. Once I heard Charlie stir, I knew it was time to leave her side, though thankfully I also knew it would be even less time than usual before I'd see her again. Being in the enclosed space of the car with Bella wasn't the most comfortable option for me, but I wasn't about to give up precious time with her just because it caused me some physical pain. Especially since today was my day for questions. I ran home quickly and got into my car, driving back to Bella's without stopping in at home. I didn't particularly feel in the mood to hear any more of Rosalie's criticisms, and I definitely didn't have time to calm myself down again with music if I was going to make it back to Bella on time. I arrived just as Charlie was heading out the front door, and waited until he was out of sight, parking where he had been. 2. I saw Bella sneak a peek out her window, and laughed at how surprised she looked to see me already sitting there. Hadn't she figured out by now that I was unable to stay away from her? I thought about knocking on her door so I could properly escort her to the car, but also didn't want to rush her if she wasn't ready yet. After all, she'd still been in bed just a short time ago, before I had time to wonder what the proper etiquette for our newfound situation was. Bella was shutting the door and making her way to the car. I took one more deep breath before she opened the car door and assaulted me with her scent again. I was determined, though, to let nothing show on my face. If she was going to open up to me at all today. I needed her to be completely comfortable in my presence. Good morning. I said softly, smiling at her expression as she took her seat. She was staring at me with those wonder-filled eyes again, like she was still waiting for me to disappear. Then, I noticed that she looked slightly paler than normal, her eyes a little redder and watering slightly. How are you today? I added. Good, thank you. She answered casually, though I could tell there was something bubbling just under the surface. Her expression was still bright, but the skin below her eyes looked shadowy. I knew she'd been stirring for a portion of the night, but I had hoped she'd gotten enough restful sleep to make up for it. You look tired. I said, growing concerned. I quickly started trying to count the actual number of hours since she'd calmed down. The time I spent with her always flew by in such a blur, it was hard to determine. Two hours, maybe three. Not enough for her to feel awake and refreshed. I couldn't sleep. She admitted. Neither could I I said, unable to resist. As strange as it was getting used to the idea that Bella wasn't bothered by the realities of my life, in truth, it was nice being able to be so honest with her. I guess that's right. She laughed. I suppose I slept just a little bit more than you did. I'd wager you did, so what did you do last night? She asked. I felt a tiny flicker of guilt, and a part of me wished I could confess that I spent my nights watching her, adoring her. Still, I didn't want her to be self-conscious, and somehow it seemed like a little too soon to let her in on all my secrets. She'd already learned far more than I'd ever intended on telling her, and today was my turn. Not a chance. I told her with a quiet laugh. It's my day to ask questions, oh, that's right. She said in a tone that made me think she wished I'd forgotten. What do you want to know, what didn't I want to know? So much about her was a mystery to me, and I still hadn't grown entirely used to not being able to listen and find out for myself. I was learning more about her by watching the beautiful way her expression shifted from moment to moment, but there were things about her life I wanted to know that I couldn't learn by watching. I wanted to learn about her past as well as her present. 
But I knew it would take her a while to feel comfortable answering my questions, so I decided to start with something easy. What's your favorite color? I asked, genuinely interested although she rolled her eyes at the inquiry. It changes from day to day. What's your favorite color today, three? Probably brown. She answered, glancing down at her sweater. I thought for a moment about the vibrant colors most humans tended to wear, likely trying to make themselves stand out. It made sense that Bella would rather blend in, choosing a more neutral palette for her wardrobe, however it struck me as odd that she would say it was her favorite color. Brown, I asked, disbelieving, and wondering if she'd just said the first thing that popped into her mind. Sure. Brown is warm. I miss brown. Everything that's supposed to be brown tree trunks, rocks, dirt is all covered up with squashy green stuff here. Her face had pulled together into an almost scowl, and I had to smile. I kept forgetting that Forks wasn't exactly her ideal environment, that she was only living here out of selfless desire to let her mother live her life. I watched her eyes closely as they softened, and noticed the way her dark brown sweater made them look even deeper than usual. They perfectly matched the color of her hair, which I suddenly had the desire to run my fingers through once more. As she smiled up at me, I was struck by how everything about her was warm and kind, and in that instant I understood her answer. You're right. Brown is warm. I said, brushing her hair back behind her shoulder. It felt like silk in my hands. We pulled up to the school, and I instantly wished I had driven slower. I wasn't ready to let her go yet. What music is in your CD player right now? I asked, figuring if her favorite color changed daily. There probably wasn't much point in asking what her favorite song was. Maybe I would find that Bella was never exactly the same person from day to day. Living such an unchanging existence. I liked the idea that I would have to pay attention each moment I was with her, to figure out exactly what mood she was in and what she would like at any given moment. Lincoln Park, she said, smiling in such a way that I knew there must be a story behind it. I grinned at her in return, reaching to pull my own copy out to show her. It was always nice when I learned something else we had in common. Debussy to this. I asked skeptically, hoping she'd explain what the look had meant. Instead, she just stared at the CD and shrugged. Sensing she still wasn't truly at ease talking about herself with me. I exited the car and walked around to open her door for her. I figured it would be easier for her if we were at school, around other people, where she knew I wouldn't ask her anything too personal. She beamed up at me when I took her hand and helped her out, which sparked another curiosity. Not used to being treated like a lady. I asked, trying to keep my voice light. I had to admit though. I had been wondering about whether or not she'd been in any relationships back in Phoenix. I didn't want to embarrass her by asking her outright, so I hinted around the subject, hoping she'd tell me something. Just because you're following a different generation's set of rules for being a gentleman. She teased. Then, her expression changed again and she looked meaningfully at me. You never did tell me how old you are, nope, today is my day. I said, amazed that she was still trying to turn the conversation back to me. I was never going to get any of my questions answered at this rate. You'll have another turn. I promise, but for now. I want to learn about you. She blushed, but gave my arm a little squeeze as we turned and walked toward the school. 4. Okay, so today you like Brown, and you're either listening to WC or Lincoln Park. If I were to, say, take you to a movie, what type of movie might you want to watch, honestly? I'm not too big into movies, but I'll watch pretty much whatever is on. I guess if I have to choose. I prefer comedies. Action movies are okay, just none of that ridiculous horror, monster, zombie nonsense, oh, no none of that. You prefer hanging out with the real monsters. She scowled at me, so I quickly continued before she could start lecturing me on the way I regarded myself. What I mean is, yes, the vampire will make a note not to take you to any zombie movies. Her face relaxed as I laughed, and we continued our purposefully slow walk to her first class. If you don't care much for movies, what would you say is your favorite way to pass the time? She dropped her gaze and her cheeks turned pink. Go on. I urged. Uh, aside from spending time with you. She mumbled, almost to herself. I really like to read. Her remark made my insides feel like they were going to burst, but I forced myself to keep going as if she hadn't said it. Clearly she was embarrassed. 
although if she had any idea how much I loved being with her, she'd know there was no reason to be ashamed. What type of books do you read, the classics, mostly? Boring answer, right, far from it. I assured her. The fact that you appreciate the great literary masters of times past, just shows that you have very refined taste, we talked about her favorite books until we reached her English class, and in a very selfish moment I almost considered asking her to skip so we could spend the day talking. Her first two classes were right next to each other, so it would be two hours before I'd be with her again, although I would be spending every minute watching her through the medium of those around her. See you soon. I forced myself to say as she grinned and ducked into the classroom. At least she seemed excited that I was so eager to spend as much of the day as possible with her. Bella's classes were uneventful, and for the most part her friends were keeping their thoughts to themselves. Although Mike's mind was racing with questions about how serious she and I were, he kept his conversation to polite comments about their classes and the weather. I left my own class the second the bell rang and moved at slightly more than acceptable human pace so that I was waiting at the door when Bella left Spanish, how was class? I asked, stifling a chuckle at her confused expression when she saw me waiting. Didn't you come from the other end of the building, no one was watching. I assured her. She sighed, looking at me disapprovingly as we began walking. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I asked, not wanting to waste a moment that could be spent getting to know her better. I wasn't sure how often she would be willing to let me do all the talking. Honestly, back in Phoenix. I really love it there. Maybe it's just because it's familiar, but it's hard to imagine wanting to live anywhere else. Not that I've seen too many places, five. So you haven't traveled much, a little, when I was younger, but mom never liked going too far from home. I mean, when Forks felt like I'd really gone someplace, that must say something. She laughed. Would you like to travel? Of course. Eventually, any place in particular. I couldn't help but think of all the different places my family and I had lived. Moving every few years grew monotonous, but it had allowed us to experience an endless number of new things. Unfortunately, we were somewhat limited in our destinations, assuming we wanted to spend any amount of time outside during the day. The Northwest had been serving us well for quite some time, and I suddenly found myself wishing Bella were happier here. As for the U.S., I'd like to see some East Coast cities. I've really only been on this side of the country, how about internationally, can I just say everywhere? She asked with a laugh. Okay, everywhere. I grinned. I'd never known Bella had such an interest in traveling, and my mind instantly launched into all the places I could take her. It probably wasn't the most logical path for my thoughts to be taking. Where would you go first, Europe, definitely, Carlyle spent a lot of time in Europe. You two should really talk sometime. He has an incredible amount of knowledge about a seemingly endless number of subjects, that sounds wonderful. You must have learned so much from him over the years, yes, he's been wonderful to me. In many ways a father, often a teacher, always a friend, with that thought, we reached her next class and I reluctantly let her go once more. I'll be counting the minutes until lunch, coming from someone who doesn't eat. I'll take that as a compliment. She said with a wide grin as she turned to step inside. The minutes dragged, and when lunch finally arrived, she greeted me with another huge smile. We sat at the same table we had the previous day, and again, the eyes of the school seemed to be on us. What does he see in her? Jessica thought, rudely glaring at us. Had to be Bella. It just had to be her that made the guy want to date. Mike thought angrily. Yet again. Angela's kindness helped me to block out everyone else's infuriating inability to mind their own business. They look really happy. It's nice he finally has someone, she thought, smiling and waving at Bella as she passed. Angela approves of us. I told Bella once she was out of earshot. And the rest of them. She asked, glancing nervously around her. Angela approves. I repeated. Bella's face growing redder by the second. But don't worry about them, okay? If you let what others think get to you. You'll never have any peace. Trust me. I have a lot of experience, six. Yeah. I guess you do. She said, returning her gaze to mine. Her eyes looked sad and concerned, and the last thing I wanted was her worrying about the oddities of my life that grown so used to. The only thing I cared about was that Bella seemed to accept me so entirely, and I was eager to get back our earlier light-hearted mood. 
So, Bella who wants to travel the world and read the classics, shall we continue? If you really want to, but I still don't know why you find me so interesting, you're a mystery to me. Bella. A mystery that keeps getting more and more beautiful with each piece of the puzzle I unlock, she blushed deeper than I'd seen all day, her eyes darting to her hands, which she'd started to fidget with on the table. If you say so. She whispered, and although she still sounded like she doubted me, along with her blush, she was now grinning ear to ear. Okay, I'm guessing you're not particularly into sports, what tipped you off? She asked sarcastically, meeting my eyes again. Oh, just a hunch. Bet that breaks Charlie's heart a little, I watch baseball with him sometimes. And football if I'm really bored, though I gave up trying to understand the rules years ago, what activities were you interested in when you were younger, I took ballet for a while, but I was never any good at it. I think mom was hoping to find something that would help my coordination, but the year I twisted my ankle at the big recital, she decided it was probably a lost cause, anything else, I tried ice skating once, and how did that go, she considered putting me back in ballet, I laughed loudly, and was happy to see her laughing with me. With every question I asked. She grew more and more animated. At times she seemed confused by some of the things I wanted to know, but in the end I think she was actually flattered, which only encouraged me to ask her more. Returning to her list of favorites. I rattled off a few quick inquiries I'd been wondering about. What's your favorite season, in Phoenix, fall? In Forks, summer, favorite type of food, Italian, favorite drink. Lemonade, ice cream. Cookies and cream. Animal, seven. Dogs, gemstone, topaz, I was about to ask her favorite at flower when I noticed she'd started blushing again, and looked away. Did that embarrass you? I asked, baffled. No she said shyly, still not meeting my eyes. What's wrong, nothing. Now aren't you going to ask my favorite author or TV show, no. I want to know why you're blushing, no reason. It just made me think of something. Forget it. It's not a big deal, please, I asked, trying to get her to look at me again. My favorite author is Jane Austen, but I want to know why your favorite gemstone is topaz, and why it seems to have upset you, I'm not upset. She said, feigning nonchalance and still stubbornly refusing to look up. Tell me. I pleaded, wishing I knew how to use that dazzling skill she'd insisted allowed me to get my way. After a few more silent moments, she sighed and whispered. It's the color of your eyes today. If it were possible for me to blush in return, I would have been as red as her. Instead I sat there, grinning and staring at her, happier than I'd been all day. It was a silly thing to be so excited about, but something about the sincerity in her voice was making me positively ecstatic. She still hadn't looked up, and when I heard her heartbeat speed up again and her breathing hitch, I realized there was more. I suppose if you asked me in two weeks, I'd say onyx. I almost laughed as I remembered just how well she knew me, even down to the pattern of my changing eyes. As much as I was enjoying the moment, I made myself continue, in hopes that she would look at me again. I was already missing the intensity of staring into her beautiful brown eyes. What kinds of flowers do you prefer? I asked, happy when she immediately lifted her head. Cactus flowers. She said, a hint of her earlier enthusiasm coming back. Why am I not surprised? I teased, rolling my eyes. I was grateful that we had the next class together, since I was nowhere near ready to let her go. I continued asking about her time in Phoenix as we walked to biology, and didn't stop until Mr. Banner arrived. When I realized today was going to be another movie day, I instinctively moved my chair a few inches away from Bella's, not that I thought it would help much. Just as I knew it would, the second the lights went out. The electric current that seemed to flow between us was reignited, intensified by the darkness. I remembered how wonderful it had felt to graze my fingertips along her cheek last night while she slept, recalled the silky texture of her hair against my hand. I wanted to reach out to her, to hold her hand in the dark room. When she leaned forward and placed her chin on her arms, I fought against the urge to do the same. It would have been so easy to fold my arms beside hers, letting our skin touch and giving in to the electricity. Easy, but not smart. 8. I stayed planted firmly in place in my seat. Watching her as she stared straight ahead and at least pretended to watch what was on the TV. When the lights came back on, she glanced at me, and I hoped my internal battle didn't show too greatly on my face. I couldn't bring myself to begin questioning her again on the way to gym. 
I was still so lost in my desire to touch her. Right before she turned to leave. I gave in just slightly, brushing the back of my hand to her delicate face. I was certain no matter how many times I felt her perfect skin on my granite hand. I would never tire of the feeling of peace it brought me. I watched through her classmate's eyes as she stayed. Thankfully, out of the way throughout Jim. Mike was looking particularly sour, but as long as he kept Bella from inadvertently injuring herself. I figured I couldn't fault him too much. When class was over, I made my way back to the gymnasium, and was thrilled to see her brilliant smile the moment our eyes met. If every day could feel this wonderful, endlessly repeating high school might not be as boring as it once was. On the drive home, I noticed the way Bella's eyes turned melancholy as she glanced up at the overcast sky. Remembering her enthusiasm when she spoke of her life in Phoenix, I asked her what she missed most about it. I listened in rapt attention as she described things I could barely imagine. Obviously, I hadn't spent much time anywhere the sun was out on a near daily basis, and as hard as I tried. I couldn't remember what it had felt like on my human skin. I was filled with wonder as I listened to her talk about the beauty of the sun cascading across the hills and valleys of the place she loved so deeply. With each passing moment, her eyes seemed to light up more and more, and even when the rain began to pour around us, nothing dampened her spirit. It was that spark, that passion, that gave me the confidence I'd been so desperately searching for as I'd spoken to my family about taking her to my special hideaway on Saturday. There was no amount of pain too great that could stop me from seeing her face lit by the sun. Listening to her, I started to realize that one of the things I felt guiltiest about was the fact that her wanting to be with me was, in essence, taking the sun away from her. Although I was still afraid she would be repulsed by my true appearance. She'd made it clear she wanted to spend time with me, and I was just beginning to understand how much she missed the joys of a sun-drenched day. Putting all my fears aside. I was determined to give her at least this one day where she could have both. When she'd finished describing in perfect detail the beauty of the Arizona landscape. I asked her about the house she'd grown up in. She laughed, admitting she was a bit of a pack rat, which struck me as odd, since she'd barely decorated her room here. Then I realized the probable reason why. This wasn't truly home to her. I wanted to ask her more about the decisions that had brought her here, but the setting sun reminded me the evening was getting away from us. Although I wouldn't have minded being formally introduced. I wasn't sure she was ready to explain my presence to Charlie yet. Are you finished? She asked, when I didn't immediately bombard her with another series of questions. Not even close but your father will be home soon, Charlie, she gasped, then looked around bewildered, like she'd forgotten everything else in the world but us. I knew exactly how she felt. How late is it? She asked, and I hated to admit that our day was coming to an end. It's twilight. I muttered, realizing that this used to be my favorite time of day. It meant the sun no longer hindered me or my family, and with the rest of the world getting ready for sleep, we felt freer somehow. Yet now, with Bella at my side, I found I wanted the day to keep going. She was truly changing everything about the way I look at the world. When I turned and saw her. 9. Curiosity, her earnest desire to know even the darkest parts of my world. I felt as if all the love I felt for her was about to come pouring out. It's the safest time of day for us. The easiest time. But also the saddest, in a way. The end of another day, the return of the night. Darkness is so predictable. Don't you think, I like the night? Without the dark. We'd never see the stars. Not that you see them here much. She added, and I laughed at the childlike way she nearly pouted. I'd never admit it to her. I didn't want her to think I was patronizing or belittling her, but I couldn't help but find her petulance endearing. The strangest things seemed to irritate her. Charlie will be here in a few minutes. So, unless you want to tell him that you'll be with me Saturday, I suggested, part of me still wishing she would tell him the truth. Thanks, but no thanks. She said stubbornly, grabbing her books. So is it my turn tomorrow, then, certainly not. I said, feigning shock. I told you I wasn't done. Didn't I? What more is there? She asked, a hint of her earlier nervousness coming back. You'll find out tomorrow. I teased, reaching to open her door for her. I was just beginning to enjoy the sound of her heart racing from my close proximity, when something completely unwelcome interrupted it. This is completely out of line, a dark voice thought. 
It was one I wished I didn't recognize so easily. He has no right to be here. Not good. I said under my breath, debating for a moment whether I should whisk Bella away to somewhere she wouldn't have to deal with what was surely coming. Of course. I knew that would only make things worse. What is it? Bella asked worriedly. I looked toward her and willed myself to remain calm. Another complication. I said, trying to keep the edge out of my voice. I quickly opened Bella's door and sat back firmly in my seat. Determined to hold my ground steadily with Charlie so near and Billy's son beside him. This was not the time or place for confrontation. Charlie's around the corner. I said to Bella, though in all honesty. I was mostly reminding myself. Bella jumped out of the car, and I hated that I had to leave her there. She'd understand soon enough the necessity of it, but it didn't make it any easier to drive away. With a hard pump on the accelerator. I put as much distance between Billy and I as I could, as quickly as my car would allow. Part of me wanted to stay behind, to make sure Billy didn't do or say anything to upset her, but I knew no good could come of my staying and listening in. I trusted Bella would tell me later if he said anything too far out of line. I sped home, hoping Alice would be able to give me some reassurance about Billy. I was two steps through the door before she came bounding toward me. Don't worry about it. Edward, she sang, far too cheerful in my opinion, given the subject matter. Billy's upset, but he can't tell Bella anything she doesn't already know, I guess. I said, feeling only minimally better. 10. He wants her to be careful, and he feels an obligation to look out for her because she's Charlie's daughter. As far as I can see. That's the extent of it, yeah, so far. I muttered, not entirely convinced. Edward, she scolded like she always did when I doubted her abilities. I believe you have more important things to think about right now, such as, such as preparing for Saturday, what exactly do you mean, preparing? I asked nervously. I thought you said I had nothing to worry about, you don't. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do everything you can to make it easier on yourself, I already said I'd go hunting with you tomorrow afternoon. I know. That isn't the only thing you can do, though. What exactly are you suggesting, I know you've been spending the better part of your nights with Bella, but I've also seen how hesitant you are when you're near her. I think the best thing for you to do is turn yourself right around and spend every second you can next to her. Billy will only be there a few hours, then Bella should go right to sleep. I've already seen she's going to sleep very soundly tonight. She's so exhausted from not sleeping enough last night. It will be perfectly safe for you to be close to her, let her send assault you so you can start to learn to block it out, Alice, this is absurd. It's not like I can make myself immune, not completely, but I see you growing more desensitized the more time you spend with her, and now seems as good a time as any to start. More than that, though. I think it's important that you start to see you can be close to her, that you truly can handle it. Trust me. You'll thank me for this later. Then, with an aggravating smirk. She starting reciting the states and their capitals in her head so I would have no idea what exactly I would be thanking her for. As much as my mind was telling me to argue with her. I couldn't deny that a part of me was all too willing to listen to her. She'd seen that Bella would sleep soundly, and even when she was restless. I'd been able to touch her softly without waking her. Maybe Alice was right. Maybe I did need to convince myself of my ability to be close to her. I waited, pacing, until Alice told me it was all right to head back. In seconds. I was running at top speed toward her house. I arrived just in time to see Billy's car driving away. I listened outside the window as Bella and Charlie went through their usual nightly small talk, and was relieved to hear nothing out of the ordinary. Either Billy had chosen not to give any sort of warning tonight, or at the very least he didn't say anything with Charlie around. When was I ever going to learn not to doubt Alice? When Charlie commented on asking Mike Newton to the dance. I felt the same ridiculous jealously I always did when any other male was brought up. My tension eased as Bella's obvious frustration came out.